Welcome to the Fix Sleep Bedtime Stories channel, your sanctuary for relaxation, meditation, and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this journey to relaxation. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our magical sleep stories. So, let the tale begin. The Jin's Lamp Chapter 1 The Discovery in the Sands Layla was an adventurous girl living in a small village on the edge of the vast desert. Her village, called Al Nahari, was a place of simple beauty. The mud brick houses, with their flat roofs and wooden shutters, stood resilient against the relentless desert winds. The villagers lived a humble life, relying on their wits and each other to survive in the harsh environment. Layla, unlike many in her village, had an insatiable curiosity about the world beyond their borders. She spent her days exploring the surrounding dunes, often losing herself in daydreams about far-off lands and ancient treasures. Her family worried about her wandering spirit, but they also admired her bravery and determination. One hot afternoon, Layla set out on another one of her explorations. The sun blazed overhead, and the air shimmered with heat. She walked far from the village, deeper into the desert than she had ever ventured before. The sand under her feet shifted constantly, making every step a challenge. Despite the heat and the difficulty, Layla felt a thrill of excitement. She was following a hunch, a feeling that today she would discover something extraordinary. After hours of walking, Layla stumbled upon a small, half-buried object glinting in the sunlight. She knelt down and brushed away the sand, revealing an old, ornate lamp. It was covered in intricate designs that seemed to tell a story of their own. The lamp looked ancient, its metal worn but still gleaming in places. Layla's heart skipped a beat. She had read stories of magical lamps and gin, and now she had found one herself. Curious and excited, Layla picked up the lamp. It was surprisingly heavy and felt warm to the touch. She studied the intricate patterns, tracing them with her fingers. The designs depicted scenes of deserts, oases, and mystical creatures. Layla knew she had to take the lamp back home and examine it more closely. As the sun began to set, Casting long shadows across the desert, Layla hurried back to her village. She clutched the lamp tightly, eager to uncover its secrets. When she finally arrived home, her family was relieved to see her safe, but curious about her find. Layla promised to tell them everything later, but for now, she needed to be alone with the lamp. That evening, in her small, candle-lit room, Layla placed the lamp on a low table. The flickering candlelight cast dancing shadows on the walls, adding to the mysterious atmosphere. She sat down and examined the lamp more closely. The metal felt cool now, and she could see the faint glow of the patterns etched into its surface. Layla took a deep breath and, with a sense of anticipation, began to rub the lamp's surface. At first, Nothing happened. She continued to rub, hoping for some sign of magic. Suddenly, a thick smoke started to swirl from the spout, filling the room with a mystical aura. Layla gasped and stepped back, her eyes wide with astonishment. The smoke coalesced into a towering, ethereal figure. Before her stood a magnificent jinn, his form shimmering with a bluish hue. 
he had an air of ancient wisdom and power, his eyes glowing with a mysterious light. I am the djinn of the lamp, the creature announced in a booming voice that seemed to echo through the room. For freeing me, I shall grant you three wishes. But beware, for each wish comes with a price. Layla's heart raced. She had heard stories of djinn and their magic, tales passed down through generations in her village. Yet, never had she imagined she would encounter one herself. The reality of the djinn's presence was both exhilarating and terrifying. She felt a surge of power and responsibility. As the djinn's words sank in, Layla knew she had to be careful. She had read enough stories to understand that wishes granted by djinn were never straightforward. Each wish would come with consequences, often unexpected and potentially dangerous. She needed to be wise, to think through her desires and their possible repercussions. The djinn's gaze was intense, his expression unreadable. What will you wish for, young one? he asked, his voice softer now, but still resonating with power. Layla took a deep breath, her mind racing with possibilities. She thought of her family, her village, and the hardships they faced. She knew her wishes could bring great change, for better or worse. With the weight of the djinn's offer pressing upon her, Layla vowed to choose her wishes wisely, understanding that true wisdom lay not just in what she desired, but in the careful consideration of what those desires might bring. And so, with the lamp in her possession and the djinn's promise echoing in her ears, Layla's journey began, a journey that would test her courage, her wisdom, and her heart. Chapter Two, The First Wish. Layla spent the next few days pondering over her first wish. She was acutely aware of the cautionary tales that spoke of careless wishes leading to disaster instead of joy. The legends were filled with stories of individuals who, blinded by desire, made hasty wishes that brought about unintended consequences. These tales haunted Layla as she went about her daily routine, her mind constantly returning to the lamp and the djinn's ominous warning. Determined not to repeat the mistakes of those in the stories, Layla decided to start with something simple, something that couldn't backfire too much. Her village, Al-Nahari, had been suffering from a severe drought for years. The once fertile lands had turned barren, and the villagers struggled to find enough food and water. Layla saw the desperation in the eyes of her family and neighbors every day, and she knew what her first wish had to be. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the first stars began to appear, Layla took a deep breath and approached the lamp. She rubbed it gently, and once again, the room filled with a thick, swirling smoke. The djinn emerged, his towering form casting an otherworldly glow in the dim light. I am ready to make my first wish, Layla said, her voice steady, but her heart pounding. I wish for enough food and water to provide for my family and our village. The djinn nodded, his expression unreadable. With a wave of his hand, a dazzling light filled the room. When it faded, Layla found herself standing in front of a bountiful supply of food and water. Barrels of fresh, clear water and crates overflowing with fruits, grains, and vegetables appeared as if by magic. The following morning, Layla revealed the miracle to the villagers. They were astonished and overjoyed. Children ran around with fruits in their hands, and the elders wept with relief. For the first time in years, 
there was enough for everyone. The village, which had been shrouded in despair, now buzzed with celebration and gratitude. Layla felt a deep sense of satisfaction and pride. She had used her first wish wisely, or so she thought. For a while, it seemed as if Layla's wish had brought nothing but good fortune. The villagers thrived, their health improving with the abundance of nutritious food and clean water. Layla's name was on everyone's lips, spoken with reverence and gratitude. She became a hero in Al-Nahari, her decision seen as a blessing from the heavens. However, this newfound prosperity did not go unnoticed. Neighboring villages, struggling with their own scarcity, heard rumors of Al-Nahari's sudden wealth. Desperate and envious, they began to investigate, hoping to uncover the source of the miraculous supplies. Tensions began to rise, as rumors spread like wildfire. One fateful night, Layla's village was awakened by the sound of distant drums and the ominous glow of torches approaching from the horizon. The neighboring villages, driven by desperation and envy, had formed an alliance to take the resources by force. Armed and ready for battle, they converged on Al Nahari, demanding a share of the bounty. The peaceful village turned into a battleground. Layla watched in horror as her home, which had once been a haven of joy and celebration, descended into chaos and violence. The villagers fought bravely to defend what they had, but the attackers were relentless. The precious supplies of food and water, which had been a symbol of hope, became the source of strife and bloodshed. Layla realized the jinn's warning had come true. Her wish had a price. In her desire to help her village, she had unintentionally brought danger and conflict upon them. The weight of this realization crushed her spirit. She had thought she was being careful and wise, but the complexities of human nature and desperation had turned her well-meaning wish into a curse. As the battle raged on, Layla knew she had to find a way to fix her mistake. She retreated to her room, where the lamp sat innocuously on her table, its surface now seeming to mock her. She had two wishes left, and she had to use them wisely to restore peace and safety to her village. The lesson was painfully clear. Even the noblest intentions could have unforeseen consequences. Layla vowed to be even more cautious with her remaining wishes. Understanding now that true wisdom required not only a good heart, but also a deep understanding of the complexities of the world and the people in it. Chapter 3 The Second Wish Determined to fix her mistake, Layla approached the jinn once more. She could still hear the echoes of the battle that had ravaged her village, and the fear and uncertainty in the eyes of her fellow villagers haunted her. Layla knew that the only way to restore peace and ensure the safety of her home was to use her second wish. But she needed to be more thoughtful this time, to foresee the possible consequences. Layla spent days considering her options. She spoke with the elders of the village, seeking their wisdom, and watched the children play, their laughter a stark reminder of what was at stake. She knew that any wish she made would have far-reaching effects, not only for her, but for everyone she cared about. Finally, after much thought and sleepless nights, Layla decided on her second wish. In the evening, Layla called upon the jinn once more as the moon illuminated the desert with a silvery sheen. With the typical swirl of heavy smoke, the jinn appeared, his expression as mysterious as ever. Layla stated, 
I am prepared to grant my second wish, in a calm yet impassioned voice. I wish for our village to be hidden and protected from outsiders. The djinn nodded, his eyes gleaming with an ancient understanding. With a wave of his hand, a powerful magic enveloped the village. Layla watched in awe as a shimmering barrier formed around Al-Nahari, becoming invisible to the naked eye, but palpable in its protective strength. The djinn's magic was precise and potent, designed to safeguard the village from any further attacks. At first, this seemed like the perfect solution. The attacks ceased almost immediately. Layla and the villagers breathed a collective sigh of relief, grateful for the newfound peace. Life began to return to normal. The village, now hidden from potential threats, flourished in its seclusion. Fields that had been trampled during the battle were replanted, and homes were repaired. The once vibrant community began to heal from the wounds inflicted by the conflict. However, as the weeks turned into months, Layla started to notice subtle changes. The village, though safe, began to feel increasingly isolated. Traders who once brought exotic goods and news from the outside world could no longer find Al-Nahari. The village market, once bustling with activity, now stood eerily quiet. The villagers, who had thrived on the exchange of goods and ideas, began to feel the weight of their seclusion. Children who had once played with toys brought by traveling merchants now had nothing new to amuse them. The elders, who enjoyed sharing stories and learning about distant lands, felt cut off from the world. The vibrant life that Layla had known was slowly fading, replaced by a sense of monotony and confinement. Layla realized that while she had protected her village, she had also inadvertently isolated it. The villagers began to feel trapped, their once open world now reduced to the confines of the invisible barrier. Opportunities for growth, learning, and connection with the outside world were lost. Layla saw the longing in their eyes, a silent plea for the richness of life that came from their interactions with outsiders. The festival season arrived, a time usually marked by joyous celebrations and visitors from neighboring villages. But this year, the festival was a muted affair. The traditional exchange of gifts and stories was missing, and the villagers celebrated with a heavy heart. Layla felt the burden of her decision weighing heavily upon her. She had meant to protect her home, but in doing so, she had created a different kind of suffering. Determined to find a solution, Layla spent her nights thinking of ways to balance safety and connection. She knew she had one wish left, and it had to be used wisely. She couldn't afford another mistake. The villagers' trust in her and the future of Al-Nahari depended on her next move. One evening, as Layla walked through the quiet village, she came across a group of children playing near the edge of the invisible barrier. They laughed and chased each other, their innocence a stark contrast to the complex issues Layla grappled with. Watching them, Layla was struck by a profound realization. True protection did not mean isolation. A balance had to be struck, one that allowed for both safety and the richness of a connected life. Layla returned home, her mind clearer than it had been in weeks. She knew what she had to do. The next day, she would approach the djinn for the final time, armed with the wisdom of her experiences and the hope for a brighter future for her village. Chapter 4 The Final Wish
Layla knew she had only one wish left, and she had to be extremely careful. The stakes were higher than ever, and the well-being of her village depended on her decision. She spent days reflecting on her previous mistakes, the unintended consequences that had arisen from her well-meaning wishes. The weight of responsibility pressed heavily upon her shoulders, and she knew that this final wish would define not only her legacy, but also the future of Alnahari. Each day, she walked through the village, observing the daily lives of her fellow villagers. She listened to their concerns, hopes, and dreams. The initial euphoria of the bountiful supplies had faded, replaced by the isolation that now gripped the community. Layla saw the weariness in the eyes of the elders and the frustration of the youth. She knew she had to find a solution that would bring lasting peace and prosperity to her home. After much contemplation and consultation with the village elders, Layla finally decided on her course of action. One clear, star-filled night, she approached the djinn one last time. The lamp felt warm in her hands as she rubbed its surface, summoning the mystical being once more. The familiar thick smoke filled the room, and the djinn emerged, his presence as imposing as ever. I am ready to make my final wish, Layla said, her voice steady and resolute. I wish for the wisdom to lead my village to prosperity and happiness. The djinn's eyes gleamed with approval. A wise wish indeed, he said, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. With a final wave of his hand, a radiant light enveloped Layla, filling her mind and soul with a profound sense of clarity and understanding. The djinn then disappeared back into the lamp, leaving Layla with her newfound gift. From that moment on, Layla felt a transformation within herself. She was imbued with a deep sense of wisdom, a keen insight into the complexities of life and the human condition. She felt equipped to tackle the challenges that lay ahead, confident in her ability to guide her village towards a brighter future. With her newfound wisdom, Layla began to implement sustainable solutions for the village's needs. She understood that true prosperity could not be achieved through magic alone, but required hard work, cooperation, and innovation. She organized the villagers into committees, each focusing on different aspects of their community's well-being. First, Layla addressed the issue of food and water. She initiated projects to dig new wells and create an irrigation system that would make the best use of their scarce water resources. She encouraged the villagers to adopt new farming techniques, introducing drought-resistant crops, and teaching them how to preserve and store food efficiently. Layla then set about rebuilding ties with nearby villages. She dispatched envoys to invite traders and visitors to return to Al-Nahari and to explain their past seclusion. She suggested economic deals that would be advantageous to both sides and promote respect and collaboration. Gradually, the community started to reclaim its status as a thriving center of trade and activity. Layla also placed a strong emphasis on education and knowledge sharing. She established a village school where children and adults alike could learn about agriculture, trade, and governance. She invited scholars and experts from distant lands to share their knowledge, enriching the lives of the villagers and broadening their horizons. As time passed, Al-Nahari thrived under Layla's wise leadership. The village became known for its innovative approaches to farming and water management, 
attracting visitors who came to learn from their successes. The community, once on the brink of despair, now flourished with hope and prosperity. Layla kept the lamp safe, but never used it again. Understanding that true prosperity came from wisdom and hard work, not shortcuts. She taught her fellow villagers to value their own abilities and to trust in their collective strength. The legend of Layla and the Jinn's lamp became a cherished story in Al Nahari, passed down through generations as a testament to the power of wise choices and the true cost of desires. The legacy of Layla persisted in the years that followed. The values she had taught allowed the community to thrive even after she passed away. Her experience served as a reminder that people who dared to dream big and strive for a better future held the greatest magic of all within their hearts and brains. As a result, Layla's name was inscribed in the history of Al Nahari forever, serving as an example of wisdom and hope for all who followed in her footsteps. <laughs>